Talking about superstars, we had them, superstars that is, coming out of our ear rolls when we celebrated our 200th show during the last series. We had the legendary Miss Gloria Swanson, Miss Olivia Newton-John, pre-gong, and if that wasn't enough, the greatest superstar of them all, the legendary, not to say infamous, Dame Edna Everidge. I mean, you were once a housewife in a Melbourne suburb, weren't you? It's like you? a dream, isn't it? <laughs> Melbourne suburbs? Well, obviously, Hollywood is a Los Angeles suburb, really, isn't it? That's isn't right. Isn't it when you think about it? Mooney Ponds, Melbourne, is really the Hollywood of Melbourne. Except they didn't have a film industry, that's the only difference. <laughs> and I was brought up there, you know, a very basically ordinary person, like yourself. The only difference, really, between me and the viewers is that I'm rich and talented and they're not. That's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, oh, you know, I, I did the things that women do and some of the things that they don't. <laughs> and, you know, one day I was in a passion play. It was at Christmas time and I was in this sort of passion play, you know, on the theme of Christmas and the Bible, in the olden days. And uh, I had to be Mary Magdalene and the, the ointment and things, you know, the frankincense and myrrh. And uh, I had to then wipe it off with my hair. And, I, you know, every night, and I was in the little vestry, which was the dressing room, attached to the church, and I was over the font, because they didn't have proper wash basins or dressing tables. <laughs> and I was washing... We didn't have frankincense and myrrh. We had to use Sloane's liniment, I can tell you. <laughs> which was horrible, and Rexane ointment. And I was getting this out of my hair. This was before I went wisteria. This is, for those of you who haven't got colour, my, my hair is a delightful shade of whizzy. <laughs> anyway, and I'm wearing ocelot. Anyway, which is a little tribute to you, by the way, Miss Swanson, oh, because there's a little hint, is there an echo of Sunset Boulevard about what I'm wearing? <laughs> however, <laughs> there is. Anyway, however, I was drawing, and this is something Mr. Stroheim couldn't do with his little locks, could he? I was drawing our Lord's little tootsies with my locks, and I had to wash it all out afterwards, and I, had, I was up to my neck in the font. Who should come into the dressing room, or the vestry, but Mr. Barry Humphreys? He said, I want you, I want to groom you for stardom. Isn't that it? Amazing. That moment changed my life. It was incredible. The rest is a dream. It's like a dream for me. I still have... Yes? How is Barry? Because we're all friends, you know. I know. He often speaks of you, Does little Olivia. He? he said, oh, who knows what would have happened if, you know... Well, never mind. <laughs> the thing is, he is really... He is old enough to be one of your younger uncles, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is little Barry Humphreys and Olivia knew each other. Oh, many, many moons really? ago when she was a little toddler yeah. and he was barely more than that. <laughs> it's an incredibly small it's world, small world. And haven't things Same gone time. wonderfully for this lass? Haven't they, Miss Swanson? You may not go to our recent films, and I don't either. I share your views. Yes. But the thing is that I did go and see Greece with my bridesmaid, Madge Orsop. <laughs> she insisted we see this thing called Greece because she thought it was about Nivea cream. <laughs> she did! <laughs> she thought she's into nostalgia. She is. She thought it was something to do with brill cream or, or Nivea, which she's really heavily into because she thinks the world's Nivea resources are running out. Anyway, so we went to see it. I thought you were adorable and I loved you in the end. I'm wicked to say that, but she plays a bit of a vamp at the end and she does it just right. I adored it. I felt proud for Australia. Yes. I did, as I do every time I come on the box too. <laughs> you know, and that, I couldn't... It couldn't of a higher price than that, Miss Swanson. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to our wide brown continent? <laughs> no, but I have been invited and I now certainly must go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'd love you there, darling. We would. There are a lot of women just like me over there. <laughs> a lot of relatives there. A lot of relations. I'll give you some little introductions after the show. Fine. May I? Go. I'm going to Australia, dear Medna. Who? What? I'm... <laughs> Just in case you could figure I was here, but I'm, I'm going to Australia. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't forget him because it's his 200th birthday, isn't it? Right. <laughs> They'll adore you in Australia. They you really so? will. Well, I'd love you to go and see my husband, Norm, when you're out there. Oh, there. how is he? Oh, very far from well. I've only got one husband, but he's like seven, I can tell you that, Miss Swanson. <laughs> he's got this terrible... He's got a... At the moment, it's quiescent, but he's got what's called a rumbling prostate. <laughs> He's always had this problem with his little, you know, the gland. Well, goodness knows where it is. Poor Gloria's looking at me askance. I'm not permissive, darling. I'm but it's <laughs> rumbling. That means that it's anything could happen. And so, we have been advised by one of the greatest Harley Street prostatologists. <laughs> we have been advised that a transplant is in order. And we're just waiting for a donor, Mike. We, <laughs> you might step off the 
playing at just the right moment. Who knows? <laughs> but I shouldn't say this. I mean, this is not a thing I refer to, and I know my husband is a very, very keeps a very low profile with regard to his illness. As a matter of fact, he only, never mentions his prostate, and when he does, he only mentions it in passing. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that's the only time he ever feels it. I have to be of course, you, you wrote, of course, one of your many cultural achievements. You wrote the well-known international bestseller called... What's the matter with you, <laughs> Living with a prostate problem, didn't you? <laughs> Which is translated into many languages. I, I think I'm one of the very... Please take no notice of this celebrity. <laughs> Miss Swanson. Miss Swanson doesn't like the permissive side of this show. Oh. Have you no sensitivity whatever left in it? <laughs> Uh, I swear that Gloria Swanson didn't know whether it was animal, vegetable or mineral. <laughs> <laughs>